I'm going to write some JSL code and my hope is that you're going to follow along with me to help you develop your own JSL skills. So let me show you what the code is going to do first of all. It's going to ask you to provide a predictor variable from this data table and when you select one it creates a graph of the response versus that predictor variable and also gives you a couple of buttons. You can view histograms and you can build a regression line. So that's the script that's going to be built uh, today, uh, most of it today with some extensions and some future videos. So let's start off the process. So you're going to need to, if you want to follow along, and to be honest, the only way to learn how to code is to write code. You can't learn just by watching, I think. So you want this data table and you can find it by coming to the help menu, script and index. In here, you can go to examples for teaching and you can select fitness. I'm going to close that because I already have one open. So let's just close that. Uh, so here's your data table. You're going to need this, um, but we're going to be working with scripts. So you want to come to the second icon to create a new script window, and then you can just minimize the data table and we can just focus on this script window. So let's get started. The first thing we should always do in a script is write this names default to here it's fairly exotic what it means is that any variables that you define in a script are local to the script if you're familiar with any other programming language you'll think that's a strange thing to have to do this should in itself be the default behavior but it's not so you should always start our script with this okay now the main focus of the script is to create a window. I'll give the window a title. And that window is going to contain uh, multiple pieces of content which are organized vertically. So we can organize them in a VList box. And the first piece of content is going to be a graph. And we're going to create a function called MyGraph which will produce that graph. And then below the graph, we're going to have a button. And at the moment, we're just going to stick with one button. And that's going to say view histograms. Like so. OK, I need to define my graph. So here, let's say we're going to have a user. We're going to have a few of these ultimately user defined functions. So let's have that and then main code follows. So everything after this is the main code. Everything after this are the user defined functions. So I'm going to say my graph is equal to function, open and close curly brackets. That's a list of parameters or a list of arguments that will be received by this function. And then a bit like we say names default to here in functions, we say default local you can spell default local in curly brackets so that is a template just a generic template for defining a function what's going to go in here well the graph is going to be a graph builder oxy is the response always versus uh, for now we're going to hard code the x variable to be runtime so if i come to the graph builder and take oxy versus runtime. Oops, put that in there. I don't want the legend. And I'm working on a fairly low res screen just to help with the screen capture for this video. So I'm going to make my graph reasonably small. So I'm happy with that. If I come to the red triangle, I can save my script and I can save to the clipboard. If you are working with earlier versions of jump, you may not have this option, in which case you can save to a script window. It creates a separate window into which you can copy that piece of code. OK, so now we're back just with the script window open and I can paste that code. 
highlight it and then tab so that that's contained inside my function. That's purely visual, but these visual cues are really important to help understand the structure of your code in just the same way that I've indented these to show that these are contained inside the vList box and the vList box is contained inside the new window. Okay, so back to my graph function definition. Currently, what it's going to do is launch Graph Builder. Now, when you launch a platform, the platform always appears in its own window. So that isn't what we want. We want this to be embedded inside a new window. And the only thing we can embed inside windows are display boxes. So I'm going to put my Graph Builder inside a display box. Like so. And I'm going to give the display box a name and then I'm going to explicitly state that I want to return. So this function returns a value and the value is the contents of this vList box, which happens to be Graph Builder. And so that's what this is going to provide. So this should work now. Let's run this. It gives me my window. Notice the window is called my report. I've got the Graph Builder correct. And at the bottom, I've got this button view histograms. Excellent. So I think there is just one thing to do now, which is to implement the histograms for this button. So it's the same process in many ways. We get jump to give us the code. But first of all, let's just build the template. My histograms. And inside this definition, I'm going to get jump to give me the code for the histograms for these two. Maybe histograms only at the moment, but I'm going to uh, press the control key and then come to display options and turn on summary statistics. I've got some summary statistics as well. So that's the output I want. I can come to the red triangle, save my script to the clipboard. Again, if you don't have that option, come to the script window and just copy this. Now we're back to our main script and in the definition for my histograms, I can paste this. And now this, I want to be launched when I click this button. So what I'm gonna do is to give this button a name and I'm going to say, set script and the script is going to be my histograms like so so now when you click the button this script gets run and it calls my histograms which is defined up here so let's work on this and see if that is correct if i click the button it now gives me the histograms so that's perfect I'm almost perfect. Now I just, I, I, I would like this to be in the middle and I want it to be a hyperlink. So buttons have got a property associated with them. You can change that property. Uh, the style can be an underline and so they can be represented as a hyperlink. And the way we do that in code is we say that uh, we want the underline style turned on. So that will turn on the underlying style. Now let's get this into the center. So on the main definition now for the window button, I want to put inside an H center box and that will center align the button. Like so. And now uh, just final cosmetics. I just want a border at the bottom. In fact, what I could do is to just put some space at the bottom, but I'll give you a more general way of doing things, which is to put all of this inside a border box. At the top, I probably don't need anything on the top, so I'm going to leave that as zero. On the left, I'll put 10. On the right, 10. And on the bottom, 20. And 
all of that is going to go inside the border box and then I close the bracket for the border box. So that just gives a bit more space. It just makes, I think, this look a bit more tidier. And the final thing is I want a gap between the graph and, and this few histograms. So before we do the button, so after the graph, I'm going to put a spacer box in size zero, maybe size 20. See how that looks. So these sizes are in pixels and that's fine. So I've got my graph and I have my button. Click on there and I get my histograms. So that completes the script for this video. In the second video, we're going to address the fact that I've hard coded the name runtime. What I'd like to do is allow the user to select which column to go onto the x-axis. That will impact this graph. It's also going to impact the histograms. There is just one last thing for us to do and that is just to save the script. So come and save this and let's save this as lesson one. And when you come back to the, the part two, you're going to use this as the starting point. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and think about subscribing so you can find future videos. All the best and bye for now.